Oh, like did, if you did, don't want to think hear, I was doing that, if you don't want to hear the raw report, everybody, just let me get it over with. All if right. you stall, it's just going to take the entire show. So let's get it over with, and then we can go to the questions or whatever. If you want to jump in, Mike, you're welcome to jump in. But remember what we're doing here. We're getting through the damn report so that we can move on. But it's news. It's the A show for WWE. We had a Seth Rollins interview where he announced he will face Big E for the title at WWE Day 1 in Atlanta, which is on Day 1 of 2021. I felt the need to explain that on today's show. So, Finn Balor... Uh, interrupts. They got into a quick brawl, and then they had a match, and it was a good match. They had a nine-minute match, Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor. It was very good, and then Rollins poked him in the eye with his thumb and uh, hit him with curb stomp and pinned him. So, uh, you know, we can't leave well enough good, we, alone, as they say. So they decide they're going to show a replay to prove that he used his thumb, and so they they go in slow motion. And you see Seth Rollins, he gets his thumb like this. And he starts going like this. And I thought they're going to cut it right now or speed it up. But they didn't. So in slow motion, you see Seth Rollins' thumb go like this to Finn Balor. And they go, oh, see, he used his thumb. And I'm like, no, he didn't. You showed it in slow motion. It was nowhere near his eyeball. But anyway, that was a finish. Because it's raw. Then we had Austin Theory and Vince McMahon, us a whole bunch of, of goofy segments. Vince wants to teach young Austin the ways of the world and how you got to pay attention and how you have to not be distracted and how you have to expect the unexpected. The whole show-long storyline builds to him making Austin Theory watch all of Raw, which is torture, and then at the end, he goes to shake his hand, but he slaps him. That's the segment. That'll get this kid over. We had the Raw women's contract signing with Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. And I thought this was good. I know people are upset about the line about her friends being fired. But quite frankly, if you look at the performance of Becky and the performance of Liv, they both did a very good job. The match is happening next Monday, so I don't think Liv has much of a chance here. But I thought they did a good job setting it up. They also signed a 10-woman tag for later. We had Riddle putting a wig on Randy Orton, because this worked so well with Goldberg and Gold Dust in the year 2001. And by so good, I mean they pretty much killed the aura of Goldberg immediately. This led to Randy Orton and Riddle versus Ziggler and Rude for the, for the tag team titles, even though Ziggler and Rude have been doing nothing but losing, including Ziggler losing to Riddle last week. This earned them a championship match, and uh, the match was good while it lasted, and uh, they were beaten. So Riddle and Randy Orton retain the titles. Kevin Owens tells Rollins, I was told if I beat Big E tonight, I will be added to your match at day one. Seth doesn't believe him. Kevin Owens says, we'll go ask Adam Pierce." So Seth goes, well, I will. We had an Edge promo with uh, The Miz, and the idea here was long talking segment. Edge is a great talker. Oh, Miz is a pro on the mic. We're going to we're going to show MJF and CM Punk how to do it. Well, they didn't. Edge was good. I mean, Miz was Miz. I have no desire whatsoever to ever see these two in a feud. Edge literally is talking about I don't know how much time I have left. I'm on borrowed time. So he's feuding with the Miz. Anyway, we had a line about MJF in here. Or how MJF talked about Miz or Punk or whatever. So anyway, moving on. We had uh, the Street Profits beating Alpha Academy. And AJ pretended like he was blinded. Sarah Schreiber runs up to him and says, What are your thoughts on the Street Profits blowing a fire extinguisher in your face last week? What a question. And so he's acting blind and he can't see. And then he goes to ringside. And you'll never guess. Turns out he's not blind. He tries to interfere. He fails. The Street Profits win. And Omos is, is uh, just disgusted at AJ's stupidity. Rollins told Owens he was a liar. Because uh, Rollins had gone up to Adam Pierce and asked. And Adam Pierce says, that's not the match. But Sonya Deville had walked up and said, what did he say? And when Adam Pierce explained what Kevin Owens had lied about, Sonya says, that's not a bad idea. Damian Priest beat Apollo Crews in a United States Championship title match. 
This match was for the U.S. title. The last time that Apollo Crews won a singles match was in June, and he was gifted a championship match on this show. He did not win. Rollins went back up to Pierce and DeVille, and they told him that, hey, in fact, if Kevin Owens wins tonight, he will be inserted into the match at day one. Dominic and Rey Mysterio beat Cedric and Shelton, just beat him in three minutes, which I don't have a problem with, but... They've been doing nothing but jobs, and then they just won. I don't know what's going on. We had Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, and Dana Brooke against Becky, Carmella, Queen Zelina, Tamina, and Drew Dewdrop. They went 20 minutes through two commercial breaks. In no known or unknown universe did this match need 20 minutes and finally, Liv Morgan uh, pinned Tamina with her finish, and it looked botched. But then she hit uh, Lynch with it after the match, and that would look good. Uh, this match was way too long. Frustratingly long. We had a few more segments, and then finally the main event is Kevin Owens versus Big E. Non-title match. Kevin Owens wins. He's in the three-way at the pay-per-view. Seth Rollins comes down to do commentary. He is repeatedly told, and he reminds us, I better not get involved because if Kevin wins by DQ, he's in the match. So you'll never guess the finish after 16 minutes of wrestling. Well, Kevin Owens goes out there, and he goes after Seth. Seth jumps in the ring and attacks him. Kevin Owens is disqualified, and now he is in the main event of day one. You know the number one thing I got out of this show? WWE and Dynamite are both running the UBS arena within eight days of each other. And we talked about the ticket sales. We talked about how Dynamite's going to draw like 4,000 more than WWE in the same building a week later. And on top of all of that, forget all of that, okay? Not only were you outdrawn by AEW in the same market, but you know what AEW is not going to do in the main event of their UBS arena show? They're not going to do a horrible DQ. They're not going to put on a poor wrestling show with bad finishes. So it's like a double whammy. And yes, by the way, I did hear all the excuses. Well, you know, WWE's burned out the market. WWE's run there too often. Blah, 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 blah. Bro, the show did 5,000 fans, and they did a horrible DQ finish in the main event. And there ain't no justifying any of this. That's what happened. And Dynamite's going to draw 10,000 in the same building. And they're going to have a show with no DQs, all finishes. And it's a... I hate to say it, but it just is what it is. That's your Raw report! Exciting. Did you watch it? You didn't watch it, did you? Oh, I watched it. I don't believe it. Why would you not believe that, Brian? Because you didn't say a word about it, and we're, What's the point? we're moving on here. Then you'll bitch and moan that I interfered and that it's no, now going too long. I so... said you're welcome to talk about it, but let's not drag it out. What was your most noteworthy thing that you saw on this show, Mike? Uh, mine was, for me, it was AJ Styles and Omos. Horrible. Because here's why. It certainly seems to me, from their little banter and interaction, it may just be because... God bless him, Omas can act. He just he's not a natural thespian, it doesn't seem like. That maybe maybe I'm wrong about this, but it certainly seemed like they are leading to a split between the two. Now sure look that way. In that case, AJ Styles is of course the bad guy. He's got to be the bad guy because I don't know if you guys know this or not, Omas, the new Andre the Giant in some people's eyes there. Of course look. he is. And he can't go. And I'm. And it's not to say he's not a nice guy. It's not to say that there's not a spot for him in pro wrestling. When you're a guy that size, there absolutely is. They can figure out a way to make you useful in pro wrestling. But as a, as a every week on TV character on this three-hour show, man, man, this was coming. Because when they paired them up together, it was obvious that he was there. So AJ, he could try to get as much as he could and glean as much knowledge as he could from AJ, and AJ could do what he can with him. But 
you know, now I guess it's time for the split. It's it certainly seemed that way. It's insane to me. But that's that's actually one of the things that stood out to most. You know, I thought the Miz segment with Edge, if it was a hotter period and they had a bigger crowd that could actually react to some of the stuff that was being said, maybe it would have been better. It just it was it was too long. It was right up their alley. I can't. I don't think if, if people watch that and they want to nitpick it too much, and oh my God, they mentioned AEW mentioning them, and uh, yeah, I guess so. You could you could really nitpick that, but I thought overall it was good, but it was just very long. And the bottom line is, unfortunately, like you mentioned, do we really want to see Miz and Edge? No, and I and and that's the thing is I I don't, and you know I just will. Because there's a lot we could get into or, or say or whatever, but I guess really the bottom line is mentioning those releases twice. I wouldn't have done it just because you already, nobody, maybe, and I know in WWE's mind, they're not the bad guys in all of this, but bottom line is nobody looks at you as a good guy, and most people are still kind of steaming over this. There are people that work for you whose friends are gone, who's, who's and just they're not happy about it, so... Why even poke that bear? There are so many other aspects of reality that you could touch on. You did with the whole, you know, Ms. MJF, uh, CM Punk thing. So there are ways to do it without mentioning that because bottom line is it doesn't make you look good. And it's just it was a crappy thing to do, I thought. This person says, let me get this straight. Vince fired Sarah Logan, Ruby Soho, John Morrison, and then himself approved those lines to be uttered on national television. This was all somehow also live tweeted on Twitter as a flex. What a horrible company. Well, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, well, it's... uh, But they are... the, The problem with them is they are completely tone deaf, and they don't see what the fans see. And they want the fans to see what they want them to see, and they don't right now. And it now, as much now as there's been in a long time, fans don't need you to get their fix. And the more you keep poking with them, messing with them, they just ain't going to come back to you. Person says, WWE's top storylines from this week are people mocking other people about their friends getting fired and hearkening back to the glory days of Miz main eventing WrestleMania. I love how they no. keep bringing that up. I main event at WrestleMania and beat John Cena. In what, 2011? Yeah. That was 10 years ago. Can we move on? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem, Max, smart enough, to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.